Good morning. I'm very happy to be joined by Mayor Ed Lee, my Chief Assistant City Attorney Jesse Smith, Chief Deputy City Attorney Ron Flynn, also here are Deputy City Attorneys Yvonne Murray, Molly Lee, Sarah Eisenberg, Christine Van Aken, Matthew Lee, and Neha Gupta. All of these attorneys have been working exhaustively on the action we filed this morning. I'm announcing today that I filed a federal lawsuit against President Donald Trump and his administration for his executive order attempting to deprive San Francisco and other cities of billions of dollars in federal funding because of our sanctuary status. The President's executive order is not only unconstitutional, it's un-American. That's why we must stand up and oppose it. We must be guardians of our democracy that President Obama spoke of in his farewell address. This is not a step that I take lightly, but it's one that is necessary to defend the people of this city, this state, and this country from the overreach of a president who has shown little respect for our Constitution, states' rights, or the rule of law. The fabric of our communities and billions of dollars are at stake. My lawsuit contends that President Trump's executive order is unlawful for two reasons. First, President Trump does not appear to understand the Constitution and the limits it imposes on executive power. The Constitution gives local and state governments the power to make decisions in the best interests of our residents. President Trump's executive order seeks to intervene, interfere with those powers. Second, President Trump's executive order is based on a federal statute that governs the way local and state government employees share information out of, about a person's immigration status. While San Francisco is a sanctuary city, we're also in full compliance with that federal statute. However, we view that federal statute as unconstitutional, and that's one of the reasons we are challenging the executive order. This country was founded on the principle that the federal government cannot force state and local governments to act as its agents. Throughout our history, this nation's highest court has upheld that doctrine. As recently as 2012, the Supreme Court, in a case involving the Affordable Care Act, said that the federal government can't put a financial gun to the head of local and state governments. That remains true no matter who is in charge in Washington, D.C. President Trump's executive order tries to turn city and state employees into federal immigration officers. That is unconstitutional. No president can commandeer the local police force and turn it into the deportation arm of the federal government. Beyond being unlawful, President Trump's executive order undermines the foundation of our communities, which are built on trust, hard work, and open communication. Cities are the laboratories of innovation, the economic engines, and the cultural heart of this country. This is where the American dream happens. There is a reason that more than 400 cities and counties across this country, including nearly every major city from New York to Los Angeles, have sanctuary policies. They recognize what San Francisco first recognized 28 years ago when we learned that undocumented victims of domestic violence were too scared to report they were attacked because they feared being deported if they went to police. Sanctuary policies encourage undocumented immigrants to report crimes so that cities can investigate and prosecute. These policies get violent criminals off the street who may not otherwise have been reported. Many people think that sanctuary city policies protect criminals, but that is wrong. If the federal government has a criminal warrant, we honor that. Sanctuary cities protect children by ensuring that their parents feel safe taking them to playgrounds, to schools, to the hospital. Sanctuary city policies protect families. Sanctuary city policies protect all of us. We're all safer when everyone, including undocumented immigrants, feel safe reporting crimes. We're all healthier when every resident, including undocumented immigrants, access public health programs. We are smarter and economically stronger when all children, including undocumented immigrants, attend school. And the numbers bear that out. A recent study by a University of California San Diego professor found that sanctuary counties had less crime, fewer people in poverty, and lower unemployment than other counties. This executive order is supposed to be about public safety, but this study found 
that on average there were 35 fewer crimes committed per 10,000 people in sanctuary counties compared to others. If allowed to be implemented, this executive order would make our communities less safe. It would make our residents less prosperous, prosperous and it would split families apart. That's why I'm requesting that the court halt the implementation of this executive order and invalidate the federal law it is based on. I'm also seeking a declaration from the court indicating that San Francisco complies with federal law. We'll continue to cooperate with our federal authorities, but in a manner that respects states' rights and most importantly, our Constitution. And before I take any questions, I'd like to uh, give Mayor Lee uh, a moment to say a few words. He has been a leader and has stated uh, very clearly that San Francisco uh, will continue to be and uh, a sanctuary city and protect uh, that wonderful tradition that San Francisco uh, has always been based on. Mayor Lee. Thank you. Good morning. First of all, I want to commend our city attorney, Dennis Herrera, and his entire staff for their swift action and filing of, this, uh, of these papers to protect our sanctuary city. I want to recognize Supervisor Ronan, who's here as well from the Board of Supervisors. As I said last week, we are ready to fight to keep our city safe. Today is a prime example. The president's misguided executive directives, executive orders, make our residents less safe. And as a city, we will fight back. And today, we fight back. Since November of last year, the entire city has worked together to prepare a legal defense if, if it came to that. Well, unfortunately, it has. Strong cities like San Francisco must continue to push our nation forward. And let this once again be a reminder to America that we are a city that fights for what is right. That we stand as one to protect San Francisco and all that we believe in. Thank you again to our city attorney and to your team for protecting our city and our residents. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Supervisor Ronan, for being here. And with that, uh, I'll open it up to questions. Yeah. First, what is at stake here for the city in this lawsuit? And then, uh, are you working with any other cities or state officials, presumably, that could also help them? Yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, there are things that are at stake here, um, some quantifiable, some not as quantifiable, but just as important. Uh, We've made it quite clear from a financial perspective that uh, nationwide there are billions of dollars at stake for sanctuary cities here, most specifically in San Francisco. We get about $1.2 billion from the federal government, either direct, about 50% of that is direct, 50% uh, 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 of it is indirect through the state. But I'd say there's something that's uh, equally important, and that is the, the, the comfort and confidence of our residents. We have at least 30,000 undocumented residents here in the city and county of San Francisco, and uh, they are scared. And we owe it to our uh, community, whether they be undocumented or, uh, or citizens, that uh, a comfort in um, not fearing that there's going to be a, an ice raid at their home for no reason, and they're going to be deported. And we owe it as stewards of, um, uh, of this city to make sure that we are providing that assurance uh, and that comfort to our residents that we are going to fight uh, on their behalf against uh, uh, um, attempts to violate the rule of law. And I think that that is very, very important for our community, and that's something that we're fighting e for equally as well. Now, with respect to uh, other communities, uh, I know the mayor and myself have been in contact with uh, a whole host of cities, not just here in California, but across the country. And um, I think that you can rest assured that that cooperation will continue. Uh, and I'm hopeful that with this lawsuit today that um, uh, more cities will step up and uh, take action in a concrete way. Uh, well, as I said, uh, we've been very clear in terms of laying out our lawsuit uh, that we've cited to what occurred under the Affordable Care Act about not having the, uh, that you can't put a gun to the head of, uh, of, of localities and uh, 
we have a variety of case law that has been cited going back decades about what is required when you're going after federal funding. So, uh, and we're very confident in our analysis, and we're, uh, we believe that uh, the law is clear that you cannot commandeer uh, local officials to carry out federal dictates. If you're going after federal grants, there has to be a germaneness uh, to, that mo to that money. It can't be, un the, the dictate can't be unconstitutional, and you can't put a gun to the head of states and localities to get them to comply with what uh, you might want at the federal level. Well, I, I think if you go and look at our um, complaint, we're very uh, clear and careful with respect to how we attack that. We attack the constitutionality of 1373 uh, on its face, number one. We say uh, that it's quite clear that San Francisco already complies with federal law. And uh, I, you know, I'm not worried about the rightness argument with respect to that. And if you look, we don't really deal with the issue of funding, as it were fully knowing that what we've uh, articulated is the basis for getting to that point. And when that happens, we'll be uh, well positioned to uh, make those arguments as well. Uh, yeah, in the back. Um, how long have you guys been working on this? And are you hoping that other jurisdictions will join this actual suit or file their own? We have um, obviously, been, obviously been looking at this issue for quite some time. Uh, there's a variety of issues that we have been looking at since the election to make sure that San Francisco is protected. And uh, we have been coordinating with the state and other uh, governments throughout California to make sure that our positions are protected. So we've been looking at this issue for quite some time, as well as other issues with respect to uh, housing, uh, health care, uh, uh, environment and climate issues. So this has been going on for months. And uh, obviously, we had to see what was going to be the uh, the first shot across the bow, and we've seen it, and we were ready to go. As you know, as you know critics uh, point to the Pete Steinle case as Exhibit A yeah. uh, as being the problem with, with sanctuary cities. And there's a flip side to all this that, uh, that sanctuary cities can make cities uh, unsafe. Uh, and use that as an example. What, what's the counter argument? Um, I think that uh, what you see is that, as I mentioned there, the, 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 the data shows quite different. Thir 35 and a half less crimes per 10,000 residents in sanctuary jurisdictions versus non-sanctuary jurisdictions. Uh, I think it's quite clear that actually uh, sanctuary cities make um, uh, the cooperation between communities and law enforcement more robust, more confident. Uh, and I'm, listen, the, the Kate Stanley case was a tragedy. And we empathize with that family. We empathize whenever um, uh, someone is a victim of crime. Uh, and I think there's this misnomer out there that with, with respect to sanctuary cities that we're protecting criminals. That's not, in fact, the case. Uh, we comply with federal law. And if provided with a uh, criminal warrant or a court order, we turn information over. Uh, so I think that that is, was a convenient soundbite that folks th used for political purposes, uh, the tragedy of Kate Steinle's um, uh, death. But the reality is, in a broader sense, that um, communities are safer when you have a robust sanctuary city policy in effect. Yeah. I would say this, and then I'll let the mayor give his perspective, but it's no, it's, it's no secret that San Francisco has been uh, uh, a target, as it were, from well before our filing of this lawsuit today. And uh, we owe it to our residents to make sure that we are protecting their interests, protecting taxpayer dollars, and we're going to use every tool at our disposal to make sure that the rule of law is followed, our residents are protected, and that they know that they have um, an entity here that's going to fight on their behalf. Uh, not a surprise that we might be targeted. I think our city's values, the way we've uh, conducted ourselves as an entire city to protect our immigrant populations, to talk strongly about diversity and the inclusiveness that we have, and 
the policies, everything from our airport to how we uh, uh, help uh, disadvantaged groups in the city always made us a target. So it's no surprise that uh, this president might continue to target us. That is why uh, I've said that we should be ready, uh, that everybody in our city should be ready, whether it's on the health care front, on the homeless front, uh, on the civil rights front, or on the immigrant front. Uh, we have to be ready, and this is why uh, we've been preparing for this. And uh, again, this is why we're calling not just on our city attorney. Uh, we've asked attorneys throughout the Bay Area to join, along with foundations that uh, want to be part of the effort to resist uh, this politicizing uh, and uh, immigrant baiting uh, and making sure that these executive orders uh, do not come forward. Mr. Mayor, really quick, um, do you have a reaction to uh, the President appointing a new Uh, well, again, I think uh, to the extent that they have warrants and they're abiding by the law, uh, will will be a level of cooperation. Of course, that is a concern when you emphasize uh, people who are not interested in uh, making sure our communities are, are safe or safe in maybe one definition. I, I do agree, again, with... Uh, our city attorney that sanctuary cities are safer and it's proven statistically uh, but also uh, you talk to our police chief and our sheriff and other law enforcement professionals uh, they believe that having open communications with all of the elements of our society is much more preferable to having a safer society uh, if uh, increased uh, enforcement uh, in ice is what the president is doing uh, Hopefully, he's got an objective that it'll be safer. I don't think that necessarily makes us safer. Any other questions? Yeah, so are you guys asking other cities to join the I, I think that uh, this is going to be organic. Uh, I think uh, we, we welcome uh, as much uh, uh, support and assistance that other cities might want to provide as we're going forward, and we'll see what other jurisdictions. We have a history of working cooperatively with other jurisdictions, and that's not something that's going to change. And the state legislature is voting on bills that could actually make state more of a sanctuary state. I mean, do you hope the attorney general might even join? Yeah, we're, we're in communication with them, and any assistance, I think it's important that we all work together, and that's not something that um, I think is going to be a problem. What message are you trying to send to Donald Trump and the Trump administration? Well, I think obey the rule of law. Abide by the Constitution. You know, we're, we're a nation of laws, not of men, right? And there are um, processes and there are legal um, strictures there that give um, a level of predictability that we all have to live by. You can't, <laughs> you're not emperor who rules by fiat. We all have to abide by the rule of law. And uh, we're going to make that quite clear in this, that San Francisco is in, a, in accordance with the law. We're going to live by the law. But, Mr. President, and your administration, you need to do it as well. Last question. Yeah. Did Congress act on the executive order and blocks uh, sanctuary city funding? What happens to that funding while the suit is in progress? Do we get it on something that we might win, or do we lose it until we win? Well, that's why we're so, um, we thought it important to file this lawsuit now. I mean, as uh, um, unfortunately the mayor knows better than I do, <laughs> the budget process is a complicated thing. And it takes months. And there are certain assumptions that are made with uh, how the city allocates money and assumptions that are made. The last thing in the world that we wanted to, to position we wanted to be in is down the road. We don't know where we are. And the mayor and his team have made certain assumptions. And then there's money that is being pulled aside. and. Um, we have a big hole in our budget, and that impacts law enforcement. That Im impacts health care, impacts homeless services. So fi by filing this lawsuit today, we're trying to uh, get a, a, a declaration from the court uh, that, w that this is unconstitutional, that, we're in, that we are in accordance with the law, so that what you're talking about uh, is not a risk that we run into. What's the timeline for getting that? We'll have to see. We just filed today, so we'll have to see what the schedule is. Are there other you know, law firms that are working pro bono on this or other organizations? Or 
Well, the city attorney is the lead. Uh, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure they they have other firms. What I was referring to was the call upon community lawyers and the bar associations. As I did a few weeks ago, there was over 1,200 lawyers from the private sector who wanted to step up and help protect immigrants whose rights were being violated, uh, and they are part of the community of. Uh, legal trust that uh, we invest in as uh, as we put funds out there to make sure that the rights of our residents and our citizens and uh, green card holders and others are protected as well. Oh, we're gonna we're we're, we're definitely gonna multiply it by the volunteerism that's out there, and I think there's a lot of firms that are offering their pro bono services uh, to support this. Just to. Before we close, just, I just want to be clear so you have, I, I think that um, the mayor, I think he's absolutely right. What he's referring to is individual immigrants that may be in need of legal assistance, uh, like with respect to what we saw happen down at the airport or there are other things, and that's not work that we do uh, as a city attorney. And the mayor and the board of supervisors very generously has made um, uh, money available to other nonprofits in the Bar Association. He's been encouraging other lawyers to step up to provide that individual service, and I think that is wonderful. Uh, and it's needed. Uh, with respect to this lawsuit, um, we're handling that here in the city attorney's office um, right now, and obviously to the extent that it develops and we needed additional help, we'd look, but right now I think that's something that we can handle. Thanks very much.